of the greatest players to ever play the game. Kevin, especially back in Minnesota, you have some uh, Hall of Fame battles with uh, a guy named Tim Duncan. Mm -hmm. Talk about what those games, what those matchups were like. Tim, man, uh, Tim is very crafty, man. Our, our battles used to be just, especially as young guys, man, young guys trying to establish themselves in a gritty league at the time, full of uh, some older dominant names at the time, Michael Jordan, Elijah Wong, Malone. You know, the time where the forward position was a very, very tough position. But Timmy uh, was one of them ones, man. Used angles very well, was very long, uh, had a lot of counters, very strong, and had an inner beast that people really didn't didn't really talk about because you didn't really necessarily hear or, or see it. But, uh, man, he was... He was one of the best, man. It's, it's not by coincidence. He's, he's one of the ones. Look at Cleveland's starting group. Inside, we got the tenacious love in Thompson. Thomas and Smith teaming up in the backcourt. And it's James in at the three slot. Now, here is Irving. Look, as you see it so often, Kyrie Irving's speed makes him easy to foul. And Kevin, there was such a whirlwind around your trade to the Celtics from the Timberwolves. What were your thoughts and emotions at that time? You know what? Being in Minnesota at that time, it was very difficult for me. I didn't necessarily want to leave. I had a goal to bring the city a championship, and I felt like I could do that. Nothing worse than when you have to deal with the reality of change. Yes. I'm not the one for change, even though I do know in order to process or progress better, you have to embrace some change. So with the help of my friends from uh, Chauncey Billups, uh, Teron Lou, I sat and I thought through it with those guys who had been through the trade process and talking to me, and getting me to understand my options. And once I understood all my options, then I just, you know, it was about what was best for me and me and my fam. Mm, wow, yeah, there, there's a lot to consider. Thomas dishes to LeBron. Love wide open, he fires. Good, and the assist goes to LeBron. Love's got his first three points of the game. And KG, you're retired from the game now, and you're stepping into the broadcast business a little bit now, uh, aren't you? Bit, you see me? You, you, you know it? what? Area 21 is something that is authentic. It's me. Um, I'm having a great time watching the games. It's really cool being a fan now. I can I can root for people I want to root for. Yes. So I don't have to worry about <laughs> <laughs> preparing and who I'm a guard. And, uh, and, and I'm getting the teeth. So, you know what? It, it's a great time. Uh, it, it's work. You know, it's not just you go in there and you have a bunch of fun. You know, we actually get some things done. And, uh, but we have a great time. Man. You're in that Hey, Kev, listen, watching you, being around you, <laughs> you know, man, man, the great rest in peace to Craig, you know, Ernie, all of Charles. All these great influences, man, has, has definitely helped uh, not just me, but our younger generations of, uh, of broadcasters, man. It's totally. I didn't see this being my lane, but I'm having fun with it. Doing great job. Here's LeBron following the basket by Kevin Love. They grab their own miss. That one good for two. Boy, that makes them four out of five to start this thing. They're finding very good shots early on. Here's Boston now. Seven point differential. And Kev, you think of the great ones. You, Kobe, mm -hmm. I mean, Jordan, Timmy. Timmy, yeah, how about Gee. him? They worked, they worked harder than anybody else, Kevin. And what you uh, what you learn is that the similarity that, or the parallel that you all have is an inner animal that mm -hmm. you never speak about. Mm -hmm. You know, we're all a little off. Mm -hmm. We're all a little dark. Mm -hmm. But that's what pushes you through pain. That's what pushes you through tough moments. When, when someone says you can't, when someone says this is not possible, you, this, is, this is unreal, no one's ever done that, that's the moment you're looking for. The moment someone told Cole that he couldn't get over 50, 60, something Jordan couldn't do, he was driven in that. If Nick Phil wouldn't have stopped him, he probably would have reached 100 points. He probably would have, yeah. You know, yeah. he did He did Will Chamberlain a favor. And that's just real. He was yeah. in that type of mode. We all share that passion. We all share that drive. And the ones that have that inner darkness, we all understand. It's like, another, like a split personality, huh? It's almost like another level. Yeah. Kevin, growing up watching the game of basketball, who were some of your earliest influences? My early influences in the game of basketball was Magic Johnson. Uh, obviously, Michael Jordan, uh, and then Chris Webber. Chris Webber, Malik Sealy was kind of like the younger generation of uh, my inspiration. Yeah, yeah. St. John's was one of the destinations. Michigan was one of my college destinations. So those guys were my natural inspirations yes. early on when I was young. Yeah. Smith outside. Now Thomas. 
Love outside. Feeds to LeBron. Five on the clock over Hayward. LeBron with another miss. Hey, we're not seeing the best quarter by this guy, and he's lost his feel a little bit. Hayward kicks to Irving. Back to Hayward. He feeds it to Morris. Pass to Hayward. The three. Again, the miss by Morris. Cleveland leading by seven. LeBron outside, inside, Thompson. Yes, and it's LeBron picking up the assist. And that's now six points for Tristan Thompson. Every time they get scored on during this run, it's come from inside the paint. Morris passes to Horford. Morris a screen, a shot by Hayward, wide open. Boston again missing. Cavaliers have gone six of ten from the field in this ball game. Pass to James. Thompson in the corner. And he can't extend the lead to double digits. Boy, that's exactly how you have to play defense when he's driving the lane. You cannot give him any space. Irving for three. Boston again missing. Yeah, coming off that screen, wide open, just can't convert. Well, I think, Greg, that's exactly what you want. The screen was solid. The execution just fell a little bit short on the shot. Now here's LeBron, and James throws it down. And from the opening tip, they have been in complete control of this one. Yeah, you know, it looks like they wanted it more. Outstanding hustle and determination throughout. Outside Irving. Good on the bucket. You have to find a way to contest Kyrie at the rim. I know it's hard because he finishes it with either hand, but you've got to check him. And so it's Cleveland in control with a nine-point lead to end the quarter. They're playing a bruising game inside, and it's working for them. And we'll be right back after this. And a chance to hear from LeBron James as he talked about the challenge of remaining calm and collected throughout the ups and downs of the NBA season. For me, at a younger age, I was never even killed. We would win a playoff game when I was younger. I was excited out of my mind, and then you would lose, and I was the worst person in the world. But I think at this point in my career, I kind of stay even. One game shouldn't affect the next game. You know, you go out and play as hard as you can and live with the results. Again, just another part of the maturation process for LeBron. He's become such the consummate pro. He is absolutely as solid and steady as a rock at this point in his career. Nothing rattles him. Nothing throws him off his game. And welcome back. It's been all one-sided so far through the first quarter as our second quarter gets underway. And taking a look at the Cavaliers' performance here, what do you guys see? Uh, tough defense throughout that first period, and it's really paying dividends. Well, I think there's a level of physicality with them right now, and not allowing the opponent to feel comfortable getting into their heads just a bit. And a moment now to reset the lineups, courtesy of Gatorade, all fueled up for the second quarter of basketball. On the court right now for the Celtics. Made him out there with Marcus Morris. Then there's Brown. Then it's Aaron Baines. And it's Rozier in at the point. And Jay Crowder seems to be a, a guy that maybe you could relate to. See, I, I tough, defensive-minded player who's all about winning and all about teammates. You know, when I think about uh, the 08 team and our whole little journey or whatever, or however we played, certain players in this time I felt like could have played. Crowder's one of those guys. He could have been on one of those. What a compliment. Could, absolutely. He plays with a grit. He plays with a purpose. You know, not only is he, uh, he understands that he's a three-point threat, but he absolutely tries to do other things. Uh, he's a true teammate. When you see him helping guys up, repping up, he's energy, he's whatever you need him to be. I, I love guys like that. Kevin, when you played, we all know how intense you were, how much you cared. That, to me, was the thing that you cared so much 
about the product, about your team, about the game. But some people have said uh, that maybe there was a streak of you that was mean is maybe not the right word, but you were overly aggressive. For it. But, but I don't know how you could have played any differently. Than that. I call it dialed in. What? You huh? know, I like to think that if you're trying to accomplish something, then, you know, I only know one way to go accomplish something. You, right? you go at it with everything you have. Yes. You go to dominate it and take it over. You don't go at something uh, lightly. You not, can't walk not, through the park no, with this not, game, not, not at all, not at all. And uh, this game is full of talented elites. Night in, night out, you're playing someone that can typically go for 50 easy. So true. And, and a chance here to check out some stats on Kevin Love. Coming off a terrific season, eighth in rebounding. And he'd make you pay every time he went to the line. Top 20 in free throw percentage. He was the top 10 rebounder last season for good reason. And he's an incredibly intense guy to compete with. And, uh, and, and for a full game, too. I mean, just nonstop. Here's Rozier. Still getting warmed up offensively. No buckets yet in the game for him. Now here's Tatum. He's tightly guarded. Look at, look at the big fella working on that position. He knows how to fend guys off and get those rebounds. Kevin, over the years, we've seen a number of super teams develop, and in the Warriors' case, it's not the big three, it's the big four. Is this a trend you see continuing? You did it in Boston. Man, look. I, you were it, the original it's, it's, big three. It seems like it, eh? You yeah, know, right. You were the, the original like a, big three. You know what? It's like an innovative type of thing, right? Was, I didn't even know we were doing that. Right, because LeBron no, come back and do what? LeBron goes to uh, Miami. He's Miami the big three that, right? right down there. Yeah. And then what? Then it just starts morphing and into these different things, right? KD to Golden State. Right, yeah. oh, Man, this is. What do you think of it? I think this is pretty much the norm. You know what? Listen, I think KD took a lot of heat for it, but when you really think about what he's doing, is that I say 20 years from now, when he sits back, and he wants to talk to Steph, wants to talk to Jamal, wants to talk to Clay. These are all going to be three greats great. with him. These are, I'm just talking about those three yes. guys. That yes. He's playing with three of the greats. I'm sorry. If you had a chance to play with the other greats in the prime, Kev, you're going to do that. And if you don't, then something's wrong with you. Here's Rozier after the made shot from Jay Crowder. Morris outside. And a lot of contact on that one, so he'll shoot two here. And, Kevin, you look at the star players joining up today. At the end of the day, it's about winning. The game is about winning. More importantly, it's about these bonds that you're able to establish. Those guys are going to be brothers forever. Now, I get the whole, okay, see him leaving, right? But this is morphing into something else, and I think that this is going to be part of the norm. Championships. It is, man, and that's what you win this for. You, you go to build these things. Um, I don't know if I would have done it like that, but I understand it. I get it. He's playing with the other greats that's making the game more efficient for him, and uh, it's working. But, yes, I see this being the norm in the league. And free throw good for Morris. Yeah, and, of course, Marcus with a twin brother, Markeith, went to college together, played in the pros together. You'll have a hard time finding a closer pair of siblings. Here's what Boston's going with right now. Al Horford, he's checked in for Aaron Baines. Gordon Hayward comes in for Tatum. Marcus Marks checked in for Brown. And Kyrie Irving subbed in for Terry Rozier. Here's Rose. Order number two, around three minutes gone by. He kicks to James. Thompson sets the pick for James. Down low. And there's Corver on the assist by James. And the Cavaliers lead by 10. And good passing, setting up a lot of these buckets right now, Kevin. That's been the key. Okay, well, let's check in with David Aldridge, who's reporting from the sideline. Guys, the league may have never seen a player with more control on and off the court than LeBron James. He is a superstar, a playmaker, a coach on the floor. Some say he's the GM. He even has a stake in a player agent business. LeBron says it's his dream to one day own an NBA team. He's certainly getting some practice. Kevin? 
No question about it, David. He's well on his way. As important a player as we've ever seen in basketball. Great to have you with us, KG, and enlightening experience. Come back and, and join us sometime, okay? Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Anytime. You were terrific. You were terrific. <laughs> <laughs> you were great. Okay, Hall, you always made me look good, man. Since 95, man. We've been doing this a long, long time. time I do. <laughs> great to see you. Thank you, dog. And Doris, one of the things that really strikes me about KG, he's as smart as he is, athletically gifted. What a treat to have him join us tonight. Well, I'm in awe of his enthusiasm. And it's not just when he's talking, but when others are talking as well. There's so much life to the conversation. Everything he brought to the court for 21 years, he now brings to the booth. Looking at who's out there now for the Cavaliers. Smith comes in for Kyle Corver. And Thomas subbed in for Rose. Over to the wing. Thomas goes in. Yep, that one goes in there. Thomas got his first bucket of the night. They're getting on a roll inside. Their last three field goals have come from the paint. Picked by Horford. Hayward dishes to Irving. Horford has a wide open look. And the three off target. Another rebound hauled in. They're hitting the glass with a lot of passion. Seven second difference shot in game clock. James kicks to Thomas. Thompson a screen on Morris. Dishes to Thompson. Here's the screen. Four on the shot clock. The three from Thomas. Offensive rebound. No good on that one. And here's Smart over Thomas. Well, the hustle Thomas gives on the defensive end. You love seeing his activity level. And so it's the Cleveland Cavaliers in control with a nine-point lead to end the quarter. They're shooting the ball so well in this one. A great performance from the field. And now we'll send it over to David Aldridge, who is standing by courtside. David. Thanks very much. From one Kevin to another, you guys were dominant in that first half, and you have a big lead. But do you forget about that in the second half? Oh, yeah. We got to treat it like a 0-0 zero -zero game. I know we're going to say in the locker room, we got to come out win the third quarter. If we do that, we feel like we'll be okay. But like I said, this team is tough. We know they're capable of coming back. Well, we'll see what happens, Kevin. Thanks. Now back to the other Kevin. All right, David, thank you. We'll be back after halftime for the start of the third quarter. The 2K Sports Halftime Show. And welcome to halftime. Hey, hey, what a fantastic time of the year. NBA season getting underway. Hey, you know, hey. I'm excited. I am really excited. I am really, really excited. Man. Cleveland did not hesitate to set the pace. Some major league offense and defense in the mix as they raced out to an 11-2 lead. And it was a nine-point lead for them as they finished the first quarter. In quarter number two, they looked to surge ahead even further, but were met with some tough opposition, finishing with that same nine-point advantage at the half. What do you think, Shaq, about Cleveland? Well, the offense is running on all cylinders. Guys are focused, executing, not playing outside of themselves. That's why their shooting percentage was so high. I see it up there already in the stratosphere. Anyway, they're mixing things up, which keeps the defense scrambling. And over to Kenny. What did you think about Boston? Well, they're giving up too many high percentage looks, Ernie. They're not closing down the lane, and they're not going hard on the perimeter. That will get an L in any book. And it's just about time now for the third quarter to get underway. And as we return, we get a look at the Boston skyline. Those drone cameras are really something. The second half just about to get going here. Nice game. Great performance by Tristan Thompson. Yeah, the rebounding, particularly on the offensive side, as good as it gets, he was bringing the effort down low. Well, it's his specialty. There are certain guys who can dominate a half or even. Doors back in college, you earned a master's in education. How close were you to pursuing that path versus 
veering into becoming an analyst for basketball. Yeah, you know, to be honest with you, I always felt like I would be a high school teacher and a basketball coach, and someday maybe I'll coach a boys' high school basketball team. It's very close, Kevin. I happened into broadcasting. I left coaching at Providence College. They put their women's basketball games on radio, and that was my entree into the business, and slowly but surely, it grew every year. But still educating still, right? I mean, don't you feel there's, there's a part of education to be an analyst? Oh, there's no question about it. You are trying to help that viewer to be as close to the action as we are fortunate enough to be and sure just describing what's going on it's a lot of fun you are a PhD in broadcasting <laughs> and so in the game for the Cavaliers Smith is the two with LeBron at the three inside we got the tenacious love and Thompson and it's Thomas in at the point Both free throws, good from Kyrie Irving. And with all the talk about Kyrie coming to Boston, you still have to figure how he'll fit in to the team. Has this year and next left on his contract, player options after that. But with his scoring and shooting, should make this offense even more potent. Hayward at the elbow. The Cavaliers pull it in. And hard work on the glass. Once again, guys, they put a lot of effort and focus on the backboard. Thomas against Irving. And that's going to be a treble. A chance here to assess what parts of the four the attempts have been coming from as we look at the shot chart for the Cavaliers. And they haven't been able to exploit the three from the corner. Maybe some better ball movement would help open the floor and get that shot into their arsenal. James kicks to Thomas. Cleveland moving the ball around. The screen from Thompson. Again, Thomas missing. Celtics trail by nine. It's taken away by Smith. Now Cleveland moving it up. Smith's running. Kicks to Thomas. Back to Smith. Deflects the pass. It's stolen by Morris. So he gets the whistle. Contact on the way up and two shots coming up. And let's check out stats for James. Last season he played outstanding. He was around 26 points per game, eight assists, and eight rebounds. And with his great passing, he's been a catalyst for their offense, often seeing plays even before they materialize. There's no doubt about that. Great anticipation, excellent peripheral vision. His talents are really shining through. Here's what Boston's going with right now. Aaron Baines, he's checked in for Horford. Tatum comes in for Gordon Hayward. Brown is checked in for Marcus Smart. And it's Rozier in for Kyrie Irving. And Morris drops them both. And Cavaliers fans have to be pleased with what the team got in exchange for Kyrie Irving. An all-star in Isaiah Thomas, a two-way starter in Crowder, and some talent for the future. I think they did well. And on our sideline, our reporter, David Alder. Kevin, Celtics coach Brad Stevens is known for getting the best out of his players. He said every NBA player has an elite strength. Some of them have 10 of them. And those guys are the very best in the league, right? But every one of them is here for a reason. And there are times when you can really soar with that skill. Kevin? And that's why Stevens is already one of the best coaches in the league, David. You've talked about him for a long time, getting maximum results from every one of his players. And the Cavs stuck to their guns in the trade negotiation. They wanted that 2018 draft pick, which is coming from the Nets. You never know what happens with LeBron this upcoming offseason. They got talent and depth to win now, but also a plan B if they need to rebuild. The Cavaliers leading by eight. LeBron outside. Passes to Love. In chance shot, and Thompson with the nice bucket inside. Thompson's got eight points. Well, that's a prime example of why Tristan Thompson is considered one of the best offensive rebounders in the game right now. Time called here. The Celtics decide to talk it over. Well, we the North 
starting to turn out some players, right? Out of Toronto, Canada, Tristan Thompson. He doesn't have the most expansive offensive skill set, but guys, his motor is as good as it gets. And the Cavaliers making a change here. Jay Crowder's checked in for Tristan Thompson. Shumper comes in for LeBron. Kyle Korver, who's checked in for J.R. Smith. And Derek Rose is subbed in for Isaiah Thomas. And his ability to knock down shots from the mid-range. I mean, he just seems to roll that ball so easily off his fingertips. It looks like it's going in every time. Rose gets to jump. And there's the pass to Crowder. Six to shoot. There's Rose with the three. Rebounded by the Celtics. And Thompson, one of the most relentless rebounders in the NBA. Well, this is the elite skill he brings to the table. His durability and nightly effort on the boards make him a hugely valuable player, worthy of that contract. Here's Rozier. He's guarded by Love. Just his first attempt. Count it, and the Cavalier lead has been cut down to six in the bucket from Rozier. And they are earning points with the jump shot now. Rose kicks to Love. There's the screen. There's the feed to Rose. And what was that about? Not a good shot right there. Here's Tatum. Pass to Rozier. Morris with a screen on Crowder. Rozier the pass to Baines. Brown outside. Rebound Love. And he didn't punish them for the weak coverage there, but they can't count on him to continue missing. 20 seconds left in the third quarter. Rose dishes to Love. Fires from the line. Another shot. It's tipped. And pushing it up, here's Boston. Here's Rozier. Here's Morris. And he finishes nicely on the way. Now just a four-point Cleveland lead. Well, that's what you call great thinking on the fly. Passing on the shot in midair and laying it off to the open man. And that's going to do it for the third quarter. Cavaliers lead by four. And right after this, we'll bring you the start of the final quarter right here on 2K Sports. And meanwhile, Coach Brad Stevens talking to his team. Pace of play is a big part of tonight, okay? Make sure on the bench when we come back, we lift it. We lift it. One of the team's great young teachers, Brad Stevens, wanting his guys to control the tempo. Yeah, and he feels if they push it, if they attack intelligently, it's going to be to their advantage. We've got a great game on our hands as we welcome you back. The fourth quarter of action getting started. Hayward outside at the three with Morris to his side at the four. Kyrie Irving is out there with Smart. And it's Horford in at the center position. That's the Boston Five. LeBron has become such an accomplished mid-range shooter. You've got to crowd him or he's going to drop that one in every time. Here's Irving. And the call will be against Al Horford. That's his first foul. Well, well you see the excellent skill set. And this is when you want to make an impact. Don't you love seeing this guy rise to the occasion, going right at the defense and getting it done in the clutch? Catching up on the changes for Cleveland. Tristan Thompson, he's checked in for Love. Smith comes in for Kyle Corver. And it's Isaiah Thomas in for Rose. Thompson sets the pick for James. And count it, and a chance for one more at the free throw line. The strength of LeBron is something that is never going to go away, and it will always allow him to finish plays like that. And Doris, we've seen the offensive game of LeBron James evolve over the years, adding a post game, improving his three-pointer. Well, I think, Kevin, like all the greats, the work habits and willingness to add dimensions to his game have always been there. We understand passing and playmaking have been the constants of his career, but now he understands he's got to vary the way his points and his productivity come. Outside Thomas. There's the dish to James. And finished off by LeBron. Isn't this what we've come to expect the great point guards to do? Thomas effective spotting his teammates when they're open. Irving kicks to Morris. 
Picked by Horford. And two free throws coming up. Unable to get that one to go with all the content. It's going to go on Tristan Thompson. Yeah, way to play in attack mode and get to the line. And when Marcus Morris gets a defender in a one-on-one -on -one situation, Greg, he feels the most at home. And part of that might be from going up against his twin brother all the time when they were young. Marcus Morris has a great knack to find a shot he likes. Terrific with his mid-range. This is as good as it gets from the charity stripe here in the second. And Morris drops them both. And you look at this Celtics roster, a bevy of long athletic wing players. They seem to be taking a cue from teams like the Warriors who have found success with defensive switching and, and positionless basketball. I'll tell you, a great job by Crowder to free himself up an aggressive interior scorer. Here's Irving. Basket is good, and he'll get a chance for one more at the free throw line. And I love the tenacity, guys. He simply can will his way into games at times and exert his presence. That's good from Irving. And the Celtics, as you see, are stockpiling wing forwards. Brown, Tatum, Hayward. And we're seeing those guys lining up at the two, three, and four. It gives Brad Stevens tremendous roster versatility. And he's coming up big here in the clutch. Now a timeout called by Boston. Yeah, and the amount of points they've given up here in the paint, that, that's what they got to talk about. I think they've got to ramp up the pressure. There's no excuse for letting them score at will in the paint. Make them feel you. And we've got an update here, so let's check in with David Aldridge reporting from the sideline. Hey, Kevin. Well, look, here's what Brad Stevens went over with his guys during the break. He wants to change it up defensively and get more people packed into the paint. He said they're beating us up down low. We have to put a stop to it. Let's see if they respond, Kevin. Here's Thompson. So the whistle blows on the shot and two free throws for the contact right there. Well, Thompson just a spectacular athlete and so muscular. He is so crafty on how he draws fouls while shooting. First one falls for him. And he can't hit the second. Yeah, Thompson not really the guy who's going to punish you consistently for sending him to the free throw line. Irving kicks to Morris. Horford sets a screen for Morris. Shot off the pick. It goes straight through with the switch. The important points from Morris. And when he's feeling it, he'll step up and take control. To the inside, a putback. Just Mr. Reliable again here today, Kevin. I mean, they need his points, and he's producing. Celtics trail by seven. Outside Irving. He dishes it to Horford. Over Thompson. Horford, no luck. And something we always talk about, though, shot selection. Yeah, that's not a good example right there. You could have worked it around to get a better opportunity. Thomas, no good. The Celtics have gotten four of their six shots to fall so far here in the fourth. A pretty nice efficiency there. Irving goes back up, and Thompson sends it back. That's where Thompson's length comes into play. You think you can sneak a shot over him, but he'll swat it right back at you. The screen from Thompson. Thompson sets the pick for Smith. Stolen by Smart. Hayward's got space. And a big bounce off the rim, but it sinks right in. And Gordon Hayward all of a sudden so comfortable taking and making key shots. This is why you love this guy's future. Thomas kicks to Smith over Smart. And it's Smith missing. Maybe not that time, but he'll hit more than his share if he's left open. Now here's Smart. They set the screen. More as a screen. From 13, another miss by Irving. 
And so they foul intentionally. Love check in for the Cavaliers. Forty seconds left in the fourth quarter. LeBron against Hayward. A double team love. And an intentional foul right there. Gets the first, and that increases their lead to six. And he hits both free throws here. So now it's a seven-point game. Boy, those free throws add a nice cushion to their lead. Now a timeout called by Boston. They trail by seven. 27 seconds left to play in the final quarter. A chance now to recognize our Jordan player of the game, LeBron James. And he's had the hot hand tonight, Kevin. No doubt about it. He's got his field goal percentage up over 60. And you're only going to get it that high when you're taking good, smart shots. He's really seemed to feed off the hostile environment he's been faced with tonight. Twenty seven seconds left in the fourth quarter. Here's smart. It falls. Oh and that cuts the lead to just five. You tell you Marcus Smart ready to deliver under duress tough situation. What boys. And now they decide to foul intentionally. And he misses the first one. Boy he wanted that one to fall. That's good, going one of two from the line, and that increases their lead to six. You guys know LeBron James relishes every chance he gets from the foul line, and usually he'll knock them down. Time called here. The Celtics decide to talk it over. They're trailing by six. 20 seconds left in the fourth quarter. Guys, your thoughts? And I'm not sure the two-point bucket does much here. I think they got to go for three. Unless it's an end one, a two-pointer makes no sense. Unfortunately for them, the defense knows this too. And the call will be against Al Horford. And so he's picked up his final foul. And he will sit for the rest of this game. He hits the first one, and that makes it a seven-point lead. And so he drops them both. It's an eight-point game. Fifteen seconds left in the fourth quarter. It's Brown on the wing. Cranes it from downtown. Well, this is a shot that Jalen Brown must make consistently. Nice seeing him start to look confident stroking it from deep. No choice but to foul there, but, but he's probably the last guy you want to see on the line. First free throw is good, and that increases their lead to six. So he goes two for two at the line, and it's a seven-point game. Irving kicks to Morris. Let's the three fly. It's off. So we see the Cavaliers get the 